Okay, today, boys and girls, we are going to talk about this uh, new release slash newly designed e-bike from Ingwe. It's the Engine Pro 2.0. If you guys have been around the channel, you know that I'm not well versed in the world of e-bikes. But once you do one, you kind of get a little taste for it, want to see what else is out there. Uh, Ingwe was uh, kind enough to provide me with this unit uh, for review. It works out because I've been looking for a bicycle anyway. What better way to get back into the world of e-bikes than with showing off this Engine Pro 2.0 from Ingwe. Now I have watched several videos out there in preparation for what to expect. Uh, when making my own, but nobody has taken the time to unbox it, put it all together, and then go from there. So we're going to do that today. I'm really hoping this thing isn't uh, too awfully involved. One, because your old uncle's lazy. Two, because uh, there's some daylight left. I want to get this thing charged up and get out there and do the test ride on it this afternoon. We're going to find out if we are going to have time for that. Look at all the goodies. I love new stuff. Get our dikes, best name for a tool ever, and we will snip, snip, snip. Start to get some of the styrofoam off of here. Snip, styrofoam, zip tie, styrofoam, snips, snips. Well, they got this thing packaged really well. Snip, snip, styrofoam. Zip tie, zip tie. There we go, look at this thing. Look at this thing. Looks like the rear wheel or the front wheel. There's only two options, huh? The rear wheel or the front wheel. Come on, Mike. All right, let's pull her out. Oh, big old old man grunts. Boom. Uh, in the spirit of making it look more like a bicycle. There we go, look at this nice padded seat, man. All right, stick this thing down in here. Here we go. There we go. One more turn. It should do it. Perfect. Let's open these boxes. In box number two, I'm going to assume we've got some uh, hardware and some instructions. Okay. Here's some pedals. Nice. Some end caps. Looks like some sort of an axle. Not sure what these are. There's your DC plug inside and outside, it says. So, uh, yeah, let's put this thing together. All right. We got to remove something on here. It's called an insert casing insert. I'm going to assume I got to take this screw out, then remove that little casing. Okay. This does go on here. Somehow. There we go. All right. Once that's out, this little collar here is not used anymore. It's just an insert. So we put this cap back in here though, because this is what kind of holds this thing together. Come on, get in there, baby. There we go. All right, what I'm going to say is the best move here, honestly, is to um, put your handlebar, insert this piece, put it in there before you uh, before you tighten this thing down. I'm going to show you why in just a second. I thought that the hinge lock went uh, directly in line, and it doesn't. So this is off-centered, this little part that holds the handlebar. So if I move it... There we go. Now this is going to be correct. And I know that because now I'm aligning these two screws up with the little marks on the side, with the marks on the back of the spine of the bike. So the hinge doesn't go straight back and forth. It goes kind of cockeyed at an angle, which is going to make sense in here in just a little bit. I'll show you. Cap in. Screw in. Now we can tighten these pinch bolts up on the outside of this little collar here. You want to ensure that all your gauges and instruments are facing the right way when you put that on. All right, let's see what that looks like. Here's your throttle, gears, your brakes. Okay, no, don't want to rotate it that much. All right, everything looks good. Go ahead and tighten this thing down. There we go. Now she is nice and she ain't going nowhere. And if she does, ah, we can just tighten her up again. All right, we're gonna mess with the front wheel for a minute. Front wheel, front fender, get this thing going. There's two fenders that come. The one that has this uh, skirt, that's the one we're gonna use. You're gonna position this in a way, sort of like this, right? Yeah, don't forget your washer when you put this on, right? All right, you need a 10 millimeter combo wrench. They've included all these tools in here, guys. And this uh, middle size Allen key, 
or if you want to use your own tools, you can do that too. I'm opting to use their tools. Anytime I get something from somebody I got to put together, I like to use their tools to make sure it's something that people can actually do. We're going to take this headlight, slide this bolt through, then we're going to slide it through here, and then we're going to slide it through there. Then on the other side, I want to put that second washer at the head there. Put this uh, nut back on. All right, they're calling this the uh, shipping axle, which tells me that this other piece that I have in here is the actual axle. We're gonna see. All right, you got you got spacers. If you guys know how wheel spacers work, you want these up against the uh, bearings of the wheels. So we know the brake's gonna go on this side. We're gonna stick this through. Now let's take this little piece of shit off. There we go, stick that in there. Put this spacer on. So I was trying to do this all by myself to show that it can be done by yourself. Uh, however, it's always easier when you have a friend. I like to think of my wife as a friend. Slide that disc brake in there. There we go. They give you two um, open-ended wrenches to do this with. Uh, however, I'm going to say that it's gonna be uh, a whole lot easier if you have use of a socket. All right, this thing wants me to put pedals on next. Then we'll have the fender, the luggage rack. There we go. And this is this 15 inch, 15 millimeter wrench again. All right, and the left side is going to have an opposite thread pattern, I'm assuming. All right, you got some screws going all around this, uh, we'll call it a swing arm. We're gonna take these guys out because we're gonna mount, we're gonna use it to kind of mount the fender and the luggage rack all in one. All right, we're not too far away from having uh, this assembly completed. What I wanna do is you have uh, you have one tab here in the front, and at first when I was looking at it, I'm like, there's no way this is the only thing that's holding this on. Well, the way this thing mounts, it is the only thing that's gonna hold it on in the front. It looks like this whole thing kind of mounts together. So we put this on, and these are gonna all butt up with each other. So they're gonna support each other. It's gonna be supported by the swing arm. It's gonna be fine. So we're gonna put these in, not all the way tight, but mostly tight. Make some fine tuning adjustments and then uh, tighten it fully up from there. All right, boys, last thing we have to do for assembly before we get this thing uh, ready to ride, aired up with the tires, charged up with the batteries. We're gonna put this tail light on, boys. Now there is a lot of loose wire. They did provide some uh, zip ties. We're gonna zip tie these uh, wires to the luggage rack. So we're gonna tighten these eight millimeters. We're gonna tighten this down. We've got these two axle nut caps we're gonna throw on the front. That's gonna wrap up the assembly and installation of this thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna air it up. I'm gonna charge the batteries. We're gonna go for a little ride. We're gonna talk about some of the features next. So stay tuned. All right, it has been a couple of days since we put this thing together. I did let it charge. Uh, it advertises about six and a half hours charge time from uh, dead, empty until full. It's about what it took, maybe a little bit less. I did go to bed and let it finish charging overnight. It's a nice compact charger, uh, way easy to put into a backpack or if you get their external uh, bag here for the rear to slap them onto the cargo rack, then uh, it'll fit in there no problem with plenty of room left over. You've got a fully digital display that's backlit, very visible. You've got all-terrain tires, 20 by four inch, puncture resistant tires. It can handle all sorts of terrain. We saw several of these bikes out on Daytona Beach this past Sunday, so two days ago. Uh, they were handling the sand, no problem. You got lots of power, which is 52 volt, 16 amp hour power unit. 1200 watts is what the peak is. Uh, we'll go through some of that in a little bit. You've got a headlight. You've got a tail light with a working brake light when the lights are on. You've got a Shimano eight speed final drive. This thing folds up completely to put in the back of your SUV, your truck. Uh, maybe if you have a car with a large trunk space, we're gonna highlight that in just a little bit. All right, let's get this thing folded up. Uh, you'll see that the key is underneath here. The key does a couple of things. Uh, one, you turn it to turn the whole bike on so you can power it on. Without it, you can't turn it on. If it's plugged in, I did find that you can actually power it on while it's plugged in. Don't know how much good that'll do you. All right, there's a quick release. This guy comes over, fold it this way. You've got another quick release on this handle here. Pull that out. This comes down and you've got yourself folded e-bike. 
Now the pedals do fold. Um, I found it a little bit awkward. You do have to push them in and then fold them up in order to do that. But once you've got it, you've got this little frame support here on the back that comes on the backbone of the, of the bicycle. You can kind of use that as a handle. It's heavy, but it's not all that bad, really. Get where you're going, set her down, pull your handlebars back up, slide this up, The battery is fully removable. You use the key to do that. Now you've got a bicycle again. How about that? Let's get on the road. All right, boys and girls, I am excited about this. Uh, I did cheat the other day and ride it around a little bit, but today's gonna be some uh, real tests. Don't forget your key. There is a hole underneath. Put it in, turn it on. That's also how you remove the battery for external charging. To turn it on, there's a little button underneath here. Press it. It goes through a startup procedure and she is ready to go. Now, you see I've ridden at 2.6 miles. We've got a few things we're gonna do on this little test today. I'm not gonna turn the headlight on, I don't need it. Um, notice that the PAS, that's pedal assist, is on zero. You have multiple options. And what I like about the zero option, I'm probably never gonna use it on purpose, is that the bike just becomes a standard bicycle. So if I just wanna get the exercise, or if the battery's dead, I've got no pedal assist. To change that, I can go one, gives me a little bit of pedal assist, two, a little bit more, three, four, five. Now, that's as high as I can go on this setting. Let's see how fast we could get this bad boy. Oh, they're coming, woo, about 20 miles an hour. All right, with the pedal assist on, I can also start the bike by using the throttle. This is the throttle button here. There we go. And uh, notice that I have gears. So we're gonna put this back on eight. There we go. That's the highest gear. Let's see if we can go faster. We are going a little bit downhill. Come on, baby. What you got for me? Ah! That's about all I can handle. 27, there it goes. Pedal assist gave out little bit under 28 miles an hour as advertised we're gonna pull into this mailbox stop here and show you some of the settings okay so to get to your settings you're gonna press and hold this plus and minus so for instance this tells you do I want to use miles per hour kilometers per hour I'm up here this is a uh, setting two. I can hit this top button on the side it goes down to the bottom I want it kilometers per hour you guys know I don't how much of the battery do you want to use? There's 52 volts. If I want to change that, there's that. Okay, here's your pedal assist. Okay, so there's zero to five. If I want one to five with no zero option, it's there. Zero to seven, one to seven, zero to nine, one to nine. I'm going to show you what that does. Okay, I honestly don't know what all of them do. There's a little section in the book that tells you... Uh, you know, everything that uh, all these settings are, but it's only a very, it's not detailed. It just tells you what they do. All right, now we have, we we, uh, we change the pedal assist to nine. So let's see what that does. So we're gonna start going immediately. What that does is it gives us more increments. So with a one through five, every one is 20% more pedal assist, right? It's gonna, it's gonna cap out, it has a max speed. But with the one through nine, now you have smaller increments. Not quite 10%, almost 10%. Here, let's come down this sidewalk here. Let's see if we can break that. Uh, all right, we're throttling. Throttle only. Let's see what we can do. Slightly downhill. Can we go throttle only? It caps out at about 20 miles per hour. I know we're going downhill, so that gives us a little bit more. Perfect. Okay. All right, we got a stop sign now. We're going to get to the bottom of this hill and come back. You guys know I live in the state of Florida, which is uh, pretty damn flat. So I don't have a lot of hills. All right, pedal assist is on. Uh, come on, baby. Let's see if we can break that 28 mile per hour. Come on, baby. Oh, can't, oh it totally craps out. That's fine. I mean, it's listed that way. I was just trying to see if we could break it. All right, down this hill. We're going to turn around and go back up the hill. Throttle only. All right, from a dead stop. Y'all keep in mind, your old uncle is about 250 pounds, if not a little bit more. Here, let's get down here. I can see that driveway. All right, let's go. Ready? And go. Throttle. 
throttle only. Come on, baby. I remember throttle only is going to cap out at 20 miles an hour. Uh, we're going to put that extra load on it with my heavy self on it up this hill, see if it can maintain. Okay, slows down about uh, 19 miles an hour on this hill. It's still slowing down a little bit. It's not made for that. Now, if I pedal, there we go. And she's a lot easier this way. You guys know I'm not the uh, picture of health. I'm not the image of health here. So even though I'm uh, vastly assisted by a motor, I do feel like I'm doing a little bit of a workout on this thing, a little bit. Let's not get carried away, right? Brakes feel great. There we go. Yeah, let's get back to the house. I, I'm, I'm just really impressed with this thing overall. Honestly, I think what sold me on uh, a bike like this in general was being down at Daytona Beach and seeing people ride these things around. You know, the fat tire bikes always do well at the beach anyway. Uh, but having that little extra electric assist makes uh, riding on the sand a little less daunting. Oh, that suspension feels good. Yeah, I dig it, man. I totally dig it. Now, if you want to get one of these for yourself and get $100 off, there's a code BOGATOR100. I'll have that linked below. I'll also have uh, their official assembly video you know, linked down below, too. Uh, great company. They've been great to work with over the past couple of weeks while... Uh, you know, I've had this and getting it ready for assembly and, and all these tests. I really enjoy it. Yeah, so we'll pull in here. Look at that. Nice and easy. Hardly use any of the battery at all. All right, y'all. That is going to wrap this one up. Uh, it's now getting a little bit dark out here. I had to uh, had to take this thing out and ride it for a little bit around the neighborhood. I really do enjoy it. Uh, this is the first ever e-bike that I've ever had, like a true e-bike bicycle. Uh, so I don't have anything to compare it to, but um, I'm, I'm honestly impressed. Uh, it's it's fun to ride around. I have fun. I feel like I can go fast enough to make a, a dent. You know, if I want to go downtown, you guys know I live in a small town. If I want to head downtown and enjoy some of the sights down there, take the bicycle. It's not going to be five miles an hour slow you know what i'm saying so so yeah if you want to pick one of these up for yourself remember the uh bogator 100 code uh link will be down in the description and in the pinned comment now for those of my regular viewers we'll get back to motorcycle content promptly thanks for coming along for this video and all videos and until next time we'll see you later